Good morning. Really, really great to be able to gather together again. If I haven't had the chance to meet you, I'm Don. Uh, it, it's still, we are well in, like a, over a month now into this kind of scattered gathering and uh, it's still uh, nowhere near as good or even fun or, I mean, any, any of those things as gathering together. I was just seeing before on the, um, the social feed, people saying, man, I miss meeting with you. Man, this sucks and it does. Uh, suck meeting like this, but still, um, glory to God and thank, thank God we can still meet together in some kind of way like this. Uh, I've been so encouraged to hear about discipleship groups in particular using Zoom, uh, Google Hangouts, FaceTime, uh, people doing the one-on-one -on -one meetings that we can, uh, still keeping their social distance and things like this, people serving people in the community, people in the church community, people in the wider community, um, things like this. So uh, I, I'm so grateful to God for this opportunity, even though we are grieving, basically globally. And certainly it's, it's been very difficult for those who have become sick, those who have um, been quarantined, those who have been isolated, those who, who have families of people who have died. Um, and, we, and we grieve with them. And we also want to suffer well. We also want to, uh, in every way that the Holy Spirit is molding us and making us into the likeness of Jesus, we want his full effect in us. Today we're starting a new series. It's called What the World Needs Now. And obviously... What the world needs now are things like um, a vaccine. Uh, we need people to take things seriously and, and look after each other. We need people to love one another. Uh, we need a, a good um, you know, economic environment that people can participate in and uh, provide for their families and, and things like this and, and for other people. We need people to be generous. This is what the world needs now. But today we're going to be asking the question, what does the world need from you now? We're going to be looking at a few things like uh, the world needs... Freedom from Zoom. The world needs a greater pursuit. The world needs a resilient church. Today we're going to be looking at the world needs better leaders. And we, I mean, I'm saying that fully aware that in Australia and South Australia maybe in particular, we have really great leadership in terms of um, leading us through this very difficult time. We've got very good leadership, um, uh, you know, f federally, uh, state level, in our church at City Light Church, we've got some phenomenal leaders who are leading people in some phenomenal ways. It's a real joy for me as a leader to see other leaders leading people well. Um, and yet what the world needs now is better leaders and more better leaders. Our text for today is from First Peter, and this is what it says. When you do good, oh, sorry, when you do what is good and suffer, if you endure, this brings favor with God. For you were called to this, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. This passage, we'll look at a little bit of the verses around it in a minute. It's written by Peter uh, to a church in exile. He calls them exiles. Uh, he says uh, to people who are in the world, but just sojourning, just journeying through this world, who are in the world, not of the world, um, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a people who belong to Jesus, who live for Jesus uh, in the world, representing Jesus to the world. And he comes down specifically in this part, he's talking to people who are suffering injustice, suffering generally in this passage and then suffering injustice specifically. And then he tells us how to respond when suffering comes. He says, follow the example of Jesus. Now, this, this could be the, um, the conclusion of many Sunday school stories for, for little kids. It sounds like, read your Bible, pray, and follow the example of Jesus. And yet, Scripture, the, the reason it has become perhaps cliche is because it is a recurring th theme throughout Scripture. Follow the example of Jesus. Look at places like John 13, where Jesus washes his disciples' feet. This is, what he, uh, this is what it says in John. When Jesus had washed their feet and put on his outer clothing, he reclined again and said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? Do you understand this? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are speaking rightly, since that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should also do just as I have done for you. Truly I tell you, a servant is not greater than his master, and a messenger not greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. And a little later, he says one of our like key and core verses at Sidelite, he gives 
mama, that they love one another just as he has loved them, they love one another. Jesus is saying, follow my example. Second Corinthians, Paul also writes, another scripture writer writes, for the love of Christ compels us or controls us. It's, it, is, it is the thing propelling us forward. Since we have reached this conclusion, the, once, the one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all so that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for the one who died for them and was raised. Because Jesus died, we have died in him. Because he died for us, we no longer live for ourselves. We are modeling after Jesus. In fact, Paul in another place says, you can imitate me, you follow after me because I am following after Jesus. And that is our goal to example after Jesus. One more from Ephesians 4. Speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head Christ. So uh, Paul, this is writing about the body. We are the body, each individually members of it. And uh, one, one of our chief and core goals is to grow up into the likeness of Jesus. From him, the whole body fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament promotes the growth of the body for building itself up in love by the proper working of each individual part. So man, the more we become like Jesus, the more we grow up into the head, we grow together in love and fruitfulness. And as individuals in the body, um, as each individual in the body lives as Christ would have them, uh, there is the love and there is the fruitfulness. Us living as we should. So again, we're looking at what does the world need now? It needs better leaders. And I put it to you that I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about just, well, we need to pray that we have better leaders in government. We need to pray that or, or try to manufacture it so that we can have better governors, better um, members of parliament, better, a better prime minister, um, better councillors, better anything. I, I'm actually talking here about, about you. What does the world need from you? It needs you to be a better leader. We need better leaders, abstract, just definitely, and we need more better leaders. We often outsource uh, our leadership to others. Aussies are pretty good at this. Uh, we say, well, this needs to be done. I'm busy doing my own thing. You seem to like helping people, at least at the start, or, or you, you want this position, or you want this power, or you want this paycheck, or you want this platform, or you want this prestige or whatever, so you go for it. I will offer you my input. I will offer you my critique under the guise of accountability. Uh, I will offer you... Um, Maybe some, some money, tax money, for example, or, maybe, or in, in a church situation, uh, maybe some tithe money or um, giving so that you can do what I should be doing uh, and you take responsibility for those things that I don't want to take responsibility for. Therefore, I'll go and focus on my own life. This kind of leadership leads to uh, people trying to cover over their mistakes because if those people have been, if we've outsourced our responsibility, outsourced our leadership responsibility to somebody else, uh, to a third party, to a government, to a whatever, <clears throat> and we're not actively engaged in our responsibility, um, then we critique that in a kind of abstract way that's not helpful. And those people have a, uh, they, they want to cover over any kind of mistakes because anything that comes out that is a failure or weakness is just an opportunity for somebody else to critique them, to attack them, to bring them down. Um, we have this adversarial kind of gotcha, tearing one another down system, uh, really in, in our media, in our government. Uh, it's not helpful. We, need, we do need better leaders in those places. But I'm talking about we need better leaders in your home. We need better leaders in your street. We need better leaders in your neighbourhood. We need better leaders in our church. And we need a better kind of leadership in our city. So we need, we need to talk about what is leadership. If we're going to talk, talk about following the example of Jesus that he led well, in fact, perfectly well. And again, he wasn't just a good example. He was much more than that. We'll see this even in our kid text today. But he was an example. Scripture makes a big deal about how we example after Jesus. For me, leadership is drawing on your maturity, experience, and wisdom, leveraging your influence to take responsibility for and to help people move towards a future that's good for them. So one more time. It's drawing on your maturity, your wisdom, your experience, leveraging, leveraging your influence. So everybody has a sphere of influence, people, um, places, organizations that they have influence over, even if that influence is just 
like confined to just yourself. We'll talk about what it looks like to be a good leader of yourself and then a good leader of everyone else. To take responsibility for and help move people towards a future good for them. So again, even if you don't think of yourself as a leader, you're like, well, other people are leaders or other people have gifts of leadership and that may be true. I put it to you, everybody, every single person, including yourself, has influence over someone and something, whether it's just your, your own life, your own house, your own bank account, your own spending, your own vocation. You have a leadership responsibility right there. If you're worried that you're not the right person, you don't have the right experience, you don't have the right influence, still the world needs leaders like you. If you're worried about making mistakes, you see we have this adversarial kind of public leadership and you're like, I don't want to have anything to do with that. I want to encourage you. Uh, my, my, my other definition of leadership, or if, you, if I look at it you know, with the etymology of Don, it's made up of two words, lead and ership. Lead from leading, meaning again, to have influence over, over someone or something, uh, taking them somewhere that's good for them, leveraging your know, influence, um, drawing on your maturity experience, and wisdom, and ership, not as in, uh, I don't know what to do, but ership as in, you are gonna make mistakes. There's been one leader ever who has not made mistakes. Uh, leadership, it is in the title. You'll make mistakes. As we'll see today, we need to have foster, develop, embody a community that uh, not just allows, but celebrates when we take chances, when we take risks, when we attempt big things, when we go, well, you know what? I don't necessarily have a lot of experience or skill or wisdom, uh, but I want to take responsibility for my life, for my family, my household, for my street, for my community, for my church community, and for my city, if like for the world. Uh, I want to do that, and you will make mistakes along the way. We, we are, this is the community in which you can do that, and we will celebrate your mistakes um, along the way, I'm not talking about celebrating sin, I'm talking about celebrating mistakes along the way as you develop in these things. What the world needs now is people leading like Jesus, people following after the example of Jesus. Again, in that definition of leadership above, it's about drawing on your maturity. For me, maturity is taking responsibility. What does it mean to be a grown up? What, like this word adulting that appeared a few years ago, what is it? It is taking responsibility for your own life, for the life of your family or household, for the life of your community and for, and for your city. And so, uh, and really, if you haven't taken responsibility for your life, you have no business trying to take responsibility for a city or even for a community. The Bible even talks about this. It says, if your household's not in order, how do you expect to lead in, in the body of Christ, in the church? And so we want to uh, do this. This is what it means to be grown up. They've put off the irresponsible or immature things of childhood where you don't have responsibility and you don't take responsibility for your life, your family, your community, and your city. Wisdom is knowledge that you can apply. Experience is having done th some things before. So if we're wrapping all this up, how do we lead like Jesus in drawing on your maturity, wisdom, and experience, leveraging your influence, and taking responsibility for and helping move people towards a future good for them? How do we become the better leaders that the world needs now? Well, let's go back to our original passage, 1 Peter 2. You were called to this because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. This word example, I don't want to give you a Greek lesson, especially because Chris Fresh is in the room. Uh, but, it, yep, he, yep. But uh, this, is, this is talking about a specific kind of device that they would use to help people learn how to write. Uh, a, a device. In, uh, in my kids, they're learning to read and write. I've uh, got a kid in year two, kid in reception. And uh, what they do is they have like the words dotted out for them. And so as they learn to write, there's, a, there's an outline that they can kind of draw over the top of. And the closer they get to the dots that have been set down for them, the better they're writing. For me, when I was growing up, like a generation ago, we used trace paper. So you'd have the exact image on one piece of paper, then you have this thin trace paper you lay over the top of the correct image, and your goal was to literally trace 
around the edges, trying to move your image to the image underneath. That is, I believe, if this letter was written in our day, he would have said trace paper. That's what he's trying to say to us. That's what Peter is telling us to do. That's what the NT authors are telling us to do. Whether it's in how you suffer, how you serve, how you teach, how you treat others, how you live, how you love others, we are to lay our, lay our lives over the example of Jesus and as the Spirit empowers us, trace around the outline of Christ. This is, this is the how we do it, which means we need to know him. We need to know him intimately. And the more we know him, the clearer that picture underneath becomes. The more stark it is, the more boldly it comes through the tracing paper and the better our image, imaging after him will become. I hope this is making sense to you. What does this life traced around Jesus look like? I've got a few points and then we'll wrap it up. If we look to the example of Jesus, we see he lived. He, he led perfectly. He lived perfectly. He led for the glory of God. It was it is still uh, his primary purpose is to glorify his father. Every, not every time, but so often when he opened his mouth, he would talk about how his greatest desire is to glorify his father. He only wanted to do the things his father told him to do. He only wanted to say the things that came from the father. He led for the glory of God. Uh, secondly, what is, the, what is the leader whose life is traced around Jesus look like? Um, leads in the confidence of the Holy Spirit and not in their own acumen. I mean, this is where we, we looked at Jesus and we see, well, actually, we are different to Jesus in this way, where he was God. He was fully God and fully man. We are fully human and not fully God. And so when we trace around the example of Jesus, we can uh, trace around him in the fact that he, he was led by the Holy Spirit. I would see in some places like uh, Luke 4, for example, talks about how the Spirit led him to go places and likewise, we want to be led places. We want to lead out of the confidence we have in the Holy Spirit and his work in us and through us and not in our own acumen. Which means that even though before I said we're going to draw on our wisdom, maturity and experience, um, uh, over all those things, informing all of those things, um, re re redeeming all of those things, the Spirit's work in us, the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, keeping the Holy Spirit ahead of good works in advance for us to walk in. So we want to do those things that God is leading us into and not rely, we're going to draw on those things because God's gifted us with a past, with, with experience, with maturity, with wisdom. Um, but we want to lead in the power of the Holy Spirit. Also means that we can be um, what, what I've heard called a non-anxious presence in a community, maybe your family, uh, maybe your church family, maybe your, your local like neighbourhood or community. Um, there, there is a degree of anxiety around the place. Uh, you see it in the way that people have panic bought necessities like toilet paper and things like this, although, Lord willing, we, we may be towards the end of that. Uh, the Christian leader, and again, that is, that is you, uh, really can be a non-anxious presence because our hope is not in the world, because we're not relying on our own acumen, our own goodness, our own skills to try to overcome things or overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. And so we want to live and rest in the power of the Holy Spirit, operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's human nature to look around and see how other people, especially influential people, are handling things. Uh, I think about, again, my kids, uh, when they were much younger, if they would run around and fall over, often as at toddler age, if they haven't really hurt themselves, they're not sure how they think, should think about it. And so they'll look to their parents. And if you as a parent is, are freaking out, they will see that and go, oh my goodness, I should be freaking out. But if they look to you and you're like, oh, get up, it's all good, they might go, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm all good, and dust themselves off. This is the, I'm not saying all the people in your life are like toddlers and you're like the growing up, but I, what I am saying is in the power of the Holy Spirit, we have this Holy Spirit confidence that God is in control. We don't have to be anxious. If, if we don't panic, we might inspire other people to not panic. How else do we trace after Jesus? Jesus led as a servant. He wasn't power hungry. He came to serve. He came to seek and to save. 
One of the many times Jesus rebuked his disciples was when they were jostling for power. I'm the greatest. No, I'm the greatest. He says, you don't understand how greatness works in the kingdom of God. The last shall be first. The least shall be Lord of all. The least. We, we don't do it as people who are jostling for, again, platform or position or, or a title. We don't want to just gain so that we have that's not what we're talking about here. The, the, this kind of, uh, kingdom lastness, preferring the other, that is the value in the kingdom. It's not that you are meek or that you are humble and then at some stage you get promote, like you get progressive. Last of all, you're going to be the boss. Uh, no, no, it is actually the greatest servant, is the greatest in the kingdom of God. Jesus even says, he talks about John the Baptist and he says, no one born of a woman has been greater than John. And he's the least. Because greatness, at leastness, is greatness in the kingdom of God. Uh, let's go lastly. Um, takes responsibility. How, how does a leader trust after Jesus? By taking responsibility and leading for the good of those they serve. And we see Jesus do this. You see him in uh, Philippians 2. I'll read this. Paul writes to the church, uh, to the Philippian church, Do nothing out of selfish ambi- ambition or conceit, But in humility, consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look not to his own interests, but rather to the interests of others. Adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus. He's saying, you know what? Don't do it out of selfish ambition. Don't try to pursue leadership or or do any kind of good works uh, out of conceit, but in humility, considering others as more important. Laying down your life, like he writes to um, Church in Corinth, laying down your life like Jesus laid down his life for you and living for Jesus now. Everyone should look not to his own interests, but rather to the interests of others, adopting the same attitude of that of Christ Jesus, who, existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited or grasped or, or gripped onto or hung to, clung to. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he came as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus took responsibility for, I mean, for his own life. He, was, he lived his life perfectly. He had like, that perfect um, self-leadership. He took responsibility for his family, for his community, for the whole world. He took responsibility. He came and he said, you cannot do this. I will come and I'll do this. I will step in to the fray. First Peter 2, after he talks about exampling, after just tracing around him, says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that having died to sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were like sheep going astray, but you have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Thank God that Jesus took responsibility for us. Led us in a way that was good for us. Didn't go, well, that's your problem. You deal with it. Said, this isn't my problem. But because of my love for the world, I will come. So we example after him in taking responsibility for those in our spheres of influence, leading for the glory of God and leading in the power of the Holy Spirit. If you're thinking, man, this is too great a task. Uh, I I don't even consider like my self-leadership to be adequate, let alone starting to think about taking responsibility for other people. Can I say to you, don't then just go, well, if the condition of, of taking responsibility for my, my household, my community and my city is that I lead myself well, then I have to wait until this happens before I do that. So I'll just put that off till one day I develop this kind of self-leadership somehow. No, no. Uh, what I'd say to you is just start small. If this seems too great a task for you, then start small. Ask these questions of your own self-leadership. How can I glorify God in leading myself better? How am I living for the glory of God? How am I operating in the power of the Spirit and not in my own confidence? What does it look like to actually be in step with the Holy Spirit and walking in those good deeds He has prepared in advance for me? How can I serve and not jostle for position or power or prestige or platform? What does it look like for me to do that in my own life? 
And then what does it look like for me to take responsibility for my own life? I realize uh, depending on certain things that are happening in your life, um, this, this even might seem like too, too great a reach, uh, where there's sickness, uh, where there's like fractured relationships, where there's like physical distancing and isolation, uh, where there, there is, you'd love to be um, like gainfully employed, but there's, there's just no work for you at the moment. I understand um, these things. Uh, there are struggles in life. And this is why, again, we see uh, the example of Jesus in suffering. So I say, do what you can. Start where you are. Do what you can. See what God would have for you. Uh, if, if all of these things seem too far away, then your goal is to, again, as you lay your life over, the trace paper over the life of Jesus, you want to get to know him better. You want to get to know his character. You want to see what he loves. See how he thinks. Like be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In the mind of Jesus so that uh, when you do have capacity, we can the outline of his life. Secondly, self-leadership, then start leading in your family. Start leading your um, street, your neighbours, your friends. Don't wait for people to come and ask for help. You go, okay, I am the grown-up. I am the one representing Jesus. I am the one uh, through whom God is going to make his appeal through me. I am stepping into this leadership. I am the one who's going to take responsibility for these people. What about in your community, your church, your neighbourhood? What does it look like if we all, as a church community, just, just City Light Church, if we started to take responsibility for our own lives, for our families, for our neighbourhoods, for our community, and even for our city, I think it would be revolutionary, actually, for us to step into these things, to trace around an example after Jesus. Yes, we need better leaders, like in those places of, of civic leadership, but we need better leaders in every sphere of influence, right down to your own life. What about together in the city, corporately, churches leading like this in the city? What would it look like for the church in the city? Uh, the church, Jesus came to unite to himself, together taking responsibility for this city. I know that there are individuals very passionate about different things, very passionate about people coming to know Jesus, very passionate about advocating for people who cannot advocate for themselves. I know I even just, I got an email this morning. In fact, I got a text message this morning saying, open your email. Uh, state government is trying to like ram through an abortion law under cover of, um, of COVID and no one's going to hear about it. It's going to be disastrous for the unborn in South Australia. I know there are people all over the place uh, are looking at things. What would it look like if all of us together uh, really united, as we are united to Jesus, like Jesus prayed for us to be united together, what would it look like, look like for us together to take responsibility for our city, to love like Jesus loved, to trace around his outline, to pursue justice like he pursued justice, to think like he thought, um, to glorify God like he glorified God, to preach the kingdom like he preached the kingdom. Man, I think that Again, it, it would revolutionise our lives, our love, our witness. What the world needs now is better leadership and the best leadership is one traced around the person and work of Jesus. Let's pray together. Father God, I want to thank you for Jesus, for especially uh, in that he loved us. In fact, your love for us was so great. He took responsibility for us didn't leave us in our sin, in our rebellion, didn't leave us um, where, where we, I mean, where we could do nothing for ourselves, but that Jesus came for us, took responsibility for our sin, in fact, taking our sin upon him, taking our rebellion on himself, giving to us his own righteousness and giving us this example to follow. Father, would you conform our lives to the life of Jesus? We want to live, live as he lived. We want to love as he loves. Even as we are united in him, we want to become like him. And in particular, in our spheres of influence over our own lives, over the lives of those in our families, to whatever degree that is, in our street with our neighbours, in our local communities, in our church, 
uh, in our city, in our country, and even in the world for some. Lord, help us to do these things uh, for your glory, empowered by your Holy Spirit, and in a way like Jesus, taking responsibility for others. We, we want to, like Jesus laid down his life for us, we want to lay down our lives to live for him, step into those good works that you've prepared in advance for us to walk in, um, in every way for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.